I want you to commit yourself to the hands of the Lord in prayers. You want to tell the Lord that as we are preparing for this great event ahead of us, our December retreats, the choir have sung to us that will never be the same again. You want to tell the Lord this morning that the Lord himself will begin to prepare you for this great event ahead of us that you will never be the same again. As you go for this December retreat, the Lord will prepare you that the Lord himself will prepare your heart to receive the best from him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you because of this hour. Thank you, Lord, that as we come into the climax of our Sunday service today, Lord, we know you are going to speak your word to us and you are going to minister your word to us. Lord, that's why we come before you, Lord. Even as we begin to prepare ourselves for this great program ahead of us, at December we treat the conference we are having, Lord, as a church and as a region, Lord, we pray that you begin to prepare every one of us for this great event ahead of us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we commit ourselves to your hand, O God, that as we come into your way this morning, that your word will find a good ground in our heart. Lord, and your word will germinate seed, seeds of fruitfulness, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you will give us a listening heart, O God, an attentive ear to hear your word that will not be dull of hearing and will not be blind to the revelation of your word this morning in Jesus' name. Speak your word to our heart, O God, and bless us, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we be seated, please? This morning in our Sunday message, as part of our preparation, for the great program that is ahead of us, that's our December retreat, that we all be going to Glasgow in about two, two Sundays, I mean two weekends from now. We want to prepare ourselves for this great program. That's why we're considering a message like this, titled, Preparation to Receive God's Best at the Retreat. The Preparation to Receive God's Best at the retreat. You know, God has promised us His best, that His best are available for those who are ready, for those who want to get the very best from God at this retreat. That's why we need to know as members of the church, and also not just we alone, but for our invitees, what are the things we need to do in order to receive the best from God at the retreat. You know, the re primary purpose of the retreats for our church is not just to gather to socialize, not just to gather to see faces, not just to gather because you want to go and see how Glasgow looks like, or you want to go to that, you know, like now for us in our region, we're having a wonderful venue now. The Western Wood, like you see in your Ambi, the Western Wood Hotel and Golf Resource Center. You know, you don't want to go there to play golf. You don't want to go there because it's an hotel. You, want to go, you don't want to go there to miss the primary purpose where we are gathering at such a time like this. The purpose of the retreat. If you look at it from the Bible, which is our lead text, Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16. I'll read verse 16 there of Deuteronomy chapter 16. Three times in a year shall all the males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of the unleavened bread, 
and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and thou shalt not appear before thy Lord what? Appear before thy Lord what? Empty. Our retreat is not an empty place that we just go and say, oh, there is nothing to do. It's just to socialize. It's just to, you know, see faces. It's just to gather and No, we will not appear before the Lord empty. You see there, the Lord told the children of Israel that three times in a year they will appear in a place the Lord, by their God, shall choose for them. And the same thing for us as a region. The Lord has chosen this place for us where we are going from the 26th to the 28th of December. The Lord has chosen that place for us, the Western World Hotel and God with such an area that we need to go there. And for what purpose? For what reason? The retreat, the primary purpose of retreat is to gather us together. So that we can listen to a concentrated teaching of the Word of God. So that we can learn the Word of God, the doctrines, the, fund- the foundational truth of the Bible. Not only that, so that we can spend time to pray. If you look at our retreat now, you know, in this December retreat, we have created the first, you know, 30, 40 minutes time that we want to seek the face of the Lord in prayers. Every day of the retreat. And also in between we spend time when the message is not just to hear the word. We want to pray in the word of God. Not only that, we want to also encourage you that when you go back to your hostel, you go back to your room, you spend time to pray because there is, you know, and that place is why they know. You can even go, you know, and seek for a secluded place and wait upon the Lord. Like I just told you my own testimony, that one of my Christian experience, I got it in one of the retreats of the church. If I did not prepare myself, if I did not, you know, go with a heart to receive the best from God, I won't have got there. That's why I want to encourage us that we should seek God's face at this retreat. And the Lord himself will meet us there in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. The retreat period is the time, like what God told Moses, of the necessity of gathering all the Israelites together at designated time, like we learned in uh, the, like we read in Deuteronomy chapter 16. If you see the same thing there in Exodus chapter 34, now after the law has been given. In chapter 20, God still emphasized the importance of the old Israelites gathering together so that they can be taught this law of God in a concentrated period of time. Exodus chapter 34. I will read from verse 20. I will read from verse 23 there of Exodus twice in a year. Shall all your male children appear before the Lord, the God of Israel, twice in a year? For us, in our ministry, we always come before the Lord. We can even say for us, you know, for us in this church, we come twice in a week. We come for the Sunday worship service like today. We come for Monday Bible study like what we are going to do tomorrow. And then the Friday revival service on Friday. We come together twice in a week. And then we also gather together as a member of the church twice in a year. For our retreat period. For our conferencing. For what you know in the modern time today we call it retreat. We call it conferences. Some people want to even call it camp meeting. Some even want to call it, you know, some even want to call it a, 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 a time to come together, a time of workshop, a time of seminar, a time of conference. And that's the time for what purpose? It is a period where we stop all activities, all our usual activities. Like for us now, we know that period is a weekend period. 
And some people do work. Those that go, that, uh, that does shift work, that work on weekends. You want to stop all those activities. You want to take permission for those periods or for those days. Stop all activities and then come in that place, that Westwood Hotel. We come together so that we can be taught the word of God in a concentrated period of time. From Friday, we start arriving there by about, you know, by about 4 p.m. And then till on Sunday, when we leave there, those periods of time, windows of days and time, we have been taught the word of God. Nothing else. We have been taught the word of God in a concentrated period of time. That's the purpose of the retreat. And then we also go there for prayers. Not just to hear the word of God, but to spend time to pray. But to spend time to seek the face of the Lord in prayer. And this thing we are talking about, you know, is, a common, is even a common practice in the New Testament. During the period of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at it in Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Look at what Jesus told the disciples. In verse 30. And the disciples gathered themselves together unto Jesus. Do you see that in your Bible? They gathered themselves together. We need to gather together, brethren, at this retreat. We don't, you know, that's not the time we encourage you to say, oh, Pastor, you know, this retreat period, they have just done exam. You know, like some of our students now, they are writing their exams, and after the exams, they will go on holiday. You don't want to say, oh, Pastor, you know, this retreat period, I want to use it to refresh myself. I want to go on holiday because I just came from exam. No! 26 to 28, we want to gather together. Tell your neighbor, let's gather together. Uh, uh, is that the way to tell your neighbor? Look, look to your neighbor's eyes. I want to have and say, come on, let's gather together. Yes, let's gather together. Let's gather together, brethren. We treat people, we come to gather together. We come, you know, we come together. We come. It's not a people we will be looking and say, ha, ah, where is uh, that sister? Ah, Pastor, you don't know. She has gone to she has gone to see the queen. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going to see the queen. In retreat period is not the time to say, Oh, Pastor, I want to go to London I. I want to go into that, you know, that whole thing and there and the, the thing will be, No, no, that's not the retreat. That's not time for it. That's not time. Retreat period is the time we gather together. Will you gather with me? Yes. I'm asking you, will you gather with me? Yes. Look to my eyeballs now. Will you gather with me? Yes. I'm looking at you now. Those who are not talking, I know you have something, you have another agenda. I'm asking, will you gather with me? Yes. Let's gather together, baby. Let's not go. You go your side, you go my, you go your own way. We, we, we gather together. Those two days, we come together. Let's come together. And you know what? This retreat is so special. It's so, so special. Because this is the first time in our region that we are doing something like that. That this retreat, we have told all our sisters, sisters, at this retreat, you are not cooking. Women, at this retreat, and even some of us men, because I remember the last time, even the brothers were also in the kitchen, doing the, all the food, the carrying of food, the car- we've told us that, we said, no, this retreat period, we want to spend money, we want others to do the cooking, and we, we spend time to hear the word of God. And the Lord, I'm believing God, God will bless us. Amen. I say God will bless us. Amen. That's why we've gone to the hotel and we've given out, we've contracted out the catering services, giving it out to the hotel to handle that for us. And we are, pay, we are paying for that. We are paying heavily for that. So that the word of God, because money cannot be compared to the word of God. That's it. No amount of money can be compared to the value of the word of God you are going to receive at this retreat. That's why I want to encourage every one of us, especially from our church here, that we are telling our friends, we are telling our neighbors. And you know, it's a wonderful place, not a church environment. Is an, you tell somebody in this UK that come, I want to take you, come, let's go, let's go and have um, some 
outing together after uh, during the Christmas period, and I'm taking you to this hotel. You know that I think it's a five star, four star hotel. And it's a golf resource center. There's a lot of facilities there. Invite your neighbors, invite your friends, and I believe they are coming. And we are not asking them to bring money. We are not asking them. Don't take money from them. You know, but I know some of them will say, I can eat the buffet all the time. I know somebody that challenged me one day. You know, we are, we, are, we are taking that to the retreat. He told me, he said, Pastor, why is it that it must be free all the time? No, 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 no. Even to buy fuel in the, in, the, in the vehicle, you are asking me not to give money. Pastor, please. I said, no, don't worry. It's free. It's free. It's free. Jesus has paid it all. And that's what we are telling them. Jesus has paid it all. We are not asking them to bring money. Just come. Let them come. And the Lord is going to bless every one of us mightily in Jesus' name. The purpose is so that they can come and hear. And we too, we hear the word of God. We hear the word of God. And as we hear the word of God, it's going to transform our lives in Jesus' name. For better understanding, we want to consider this message in that three subheading. Point one, the purpose of the retreat. What's the purpose? Why do we need to gather together? Then preparation for God's best. Preparation for God's best. And then point three, before we pray quickly, profits of the retreat. What are the profits of this retreat? Jesus told the disciples, look at the purpose there. Jesus told them in that same Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, where we are reading, verse 30. In verse 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourself apart into a desert place. And do what? And do what? Where's the word? With which is for resting. I don't know. You know, retreat itself is it, it has a me it is a military term. When a queen in the war battle, if you are in the battlefront and the commander shout retreat, if the commander shout retreat, what do you do? Do you still go ahead and be fighting and fighting? No. The, in military terms, when the commander does say retreat, it means come back, fall back, back out. Come back. Come back. So that, you know, and the same thing the Lord is telling us this period of time. Retreat. Come back. Come back so that you can rest a while and be refreshed. Look at it. You started the year from January to February, from February to March, March to April, April to May, May to June, June to July, July to August. August to September, September to October, October to November, now December. Before the end of the year, the Lord is telling you, retreat. Come, come back, so that you can come and rest a while. That's the purpose of the retreat. So that you can refocus your life. So that you can have time. To plan, to look at what 2015 is going to hold ahead of you. So that you can plan. So that you can refresh yourself. So that you can, you know, you can, re, you know, you can renew your mind with the word of God. And prepare fully for the coming year. That's the purpose of this retreat. And as we come together, the Lord himself is going to bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Because... Purpose itself, do you know? Purpose is the propelling power that keeps any effort in motion. Do you know that? When you have a purpose, you know, before you, before you go into any endeavor, if you do something without a purpose, you just find that you quickly give up. Is that not the truth? But if you have a purpose, if you have a goal, if you have an objective, take for example our students that came to this uh, to the university now. What is the purpose of coming to the university? Some of you you want to have your MSc, is that not so? Some of you you want to have your first degree, BSc, is that not so? Some of you you want to have your PhD, is that not so? That's the purpose. 
Now, if you've not achieved your MSc, will you just sit down and say, fold your hands and be traveling all over the UK, from London to Liverpool, Liverpool to Newcastle, Newcastle to Bristol, Bristol to Belfast, Belfast to Dublin. Will you just be traveling about? Eh? And the uh, lectures are going on. You are the one just traveling about. You don't have a purpose. You don't have a... But if you have a purpose, you have the focus. You have the purpose in my that this I came to this university, University of Aberdeen, University uh, Obogodo University to obtain my masters, to obtain my degree. That purpose of that degree in view of you is the propelling force, the factor that will keep you going. Even, you know, there are times during this winter, you know that there are times that when you, you wake up like this, you look out, you say, oh, it's, it's still night. Is that not the truth? 7 a.m. It's still dark. I say, oh, ah, I need to still sleep. You turn the other side of your back. And I'm, I'm now speaking to somebody here today. Then you turn the other side again. Your alarm is say, alarm, keep quiet. It's still dark. But when you remember that I have a lecture by nine, eh? even though it is snowing, it is dark. Is that not that lecture? We need not prepare you to come out of the bed. And you remember that is that lecturer that um, if you miss his lecture, he will give us school for his exams, and you will miss it. You will quickly jump out of your bed and quickly go to for that lecture. Is that not the truth? The same thing we are telling all this morning. We need to know the purpose of the retreat. Because we are not just gathering, those to familiarize ourselves. To, you know, some of us, that will be the first time we'll be going to Glasgow. You say, how does Glasgow look like? No, it, that's not the purpose. Why this retreat? That's why I want to give us seven of them. Number one, to reaffirm the truth. We have always learned. And we have always believed. That's the purpose of the retreat. To reaffirm those truths. And you need to write these things down so that when you go for the retreat, <coughs> you ask yourself, does this, does, is this thing, the purpose for me, is it reaffirming the truths? I have always believed. I have been taught during the Monday Bible study by our Father and the Lord. In the Sunday services by our other ministers, by our pastor, at the revival services, is this mess, the things I'm going for this week, is it we are farming those truths? That's number one purpose. That's the purpose of the retreat. The purpose of the retreat, number two, is to revisit our whole consecration. You know, I mean, of you, when you got converted, you say, Oh, Jesus, I have promised. To serve you to the end, be thou ever near me, my master, my friend. But now you came to the UK. Challenges are all around you. Now you have to, you know, you know now you have to say, ah, I need to walk and pay the bill. And then you begin to, little by little, you are dripping away. You are forgetting those old time consecration to serve Jesus, my master, my friend. Now, because all the friends around you, you can't see people that they have the same convictions like you. All your friends, they are telling you, ah, this is your own church on Sunday is too much. How can you be going to church on Sunday? Eh? When we are supposed to be in the theater, when we are supposed to be in the cinema, when we are supposed to be in the stadium. How can you say you are going to, when we have that uh, material, we need to go and cover in the library? And because you are losing your old time consecration, that's the purpose. We come together the retreat so that we can visit all those old time consecration that you've made in time past. And the Lord will do that for us in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number three, purpose of the retreat is to renew our commitment to make heaven. To make heaven and to influence others positively for Christ. That's the purpose of the retreat. You want to renew that commitment. You want to make heaven. Come what may. You want to make heaven. 
the trials may be there, the persecutions may be there, the denial may be there, the, you know, the troubles may be there. You are making up your mind, you want to make heaven. Renew your commitment to make heaven. That was the purpose of the retreat. Number four is to reach forth for a touch of Jesus for salvation, for healing, for deliverance, and for the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the purpose of the retreat. That's why we go to retreat. We want to reach forth to Jesus. Jesus said, you know, that some of us, we have long-time sicknesses, we have long-time diseases, we have sometimes illness. You've gone to the GP, GP have told you that this thing, you just have to manage it. But you make up your mind, me, I will not manage anything. Tell your neighbor, me, I will not manage anything. Yeah. See the way you are telling your neighbor. Yeah. You are, sitting, you are sitting there like that and say, eh, me, I will not manage it. Then we will just be laughing at you. I say, talk to your neighbor. I say, for me, I will not manage anything. For me, I will not manage anything. Yeah, that's why you need to be at the retreat. That's why you need to be there. So that you can reach forth to the top, to Jesus and say, Jesus, I come because I don't want to manage anything. I don't want to manage any sickness. I don't want to manage poverty. Jesus, come and deliver me. Jesus, come and heal me. Jesus, come and touch me. And the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. The purpose of the retreat number five is to refresh all our past hearts. <coughs> Now, because of all the challenges of life, you read the Bible, the heart, you know, it's like the Bible is so dry. You know, I don't know, have you find it, you know, you wake up in the morning, you want to pray, and, you know, you, you pray five minutes, it's like 30 minutes for you. Has it happened to you before, be sincere? Look to my eyes now and be sincere with me. Has it happened to you before? You just pray five minutes like that. You look at ah, it's so it's still five minutes. I thought I prayed for one hour. I thought I prayed for 30 minutes. It's because of the past hearts. Have you you know have you had that experience that you read the Bible one day and then that passage you read does not make sense? You read it and then it's like there's nothing there. Has it happened to you before? Be sincere. It has happened. It happened to all men. Do you understand? It happens to all men. There are times the heart, the heart may be dry. There are times it seems as if there is nothing coming out. That's the purpose. That's why we need to come for, together for this retreat. So that all the past hearts, the Lord will refresh everything again for us in Jesus' name. Number six, purpose of the retreat is to rekindle the fire of God once again. Where the flame is burning low. It's to rekindle, to rekindle the fire of God once again in our heart, once again in our life. So that that fire will burn. And at this retreat, the fire will burn. That fire to evangelize will burn. That fire to pray will burn. Amen. That fire, you know, to, that, that will make you to be passionate after, after heaven, after holiness. You know, because, you know, when you have that fire, when you hear holiness message like we've had during a, a, a summary, question and answer period, you know, it is that fire that will make you, you go back home, you will seek God's face, you will pray, you will pray, you will pray, you will pray, you will pray and say, God, I will not let you go unless you make me holy. And the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. I remember the, the story our Father and the Lord told us many years ago, you know, he told us in the 70s, in one of the SU programs, and there was a message preached on holiness, on purity of heart, and there was one beloved sister, you know, she was seeking for this holiness experience. She was seeking for this righteousness. And that night, after the message, she prayed. She, as she was praying, she saw the face of God. She saw the face of God to the early mornings. She was still praying. She was still praying and saying, oh God, oh God, holiness. Give me holiness. That's what we are talking about. That's the fire we are talking about. 
not the one you hear only next message like this now for that. And after the uh, service, we all go back home and our life will still remain the same thing. I pray your life will not remain the same thing again in Jesus' name. You know, holiness, righteousness, is, some, is not something you just pray. It's, it's not a touch and go prayer. To be holy, to be righteous. It, we've said it already. It is the work of grace. Yes, it's a work of grace. But after God has done it instantaneously for you, my brother, you need to pray. My sister, you need to pray. You need to pray and pray and pray. You think to get heaven, to live a life of heaven here on earth, you think it's an easy thing? You think it's an easy thing? You think it's a touch and go prayer that we do it? My brother, it is not a touch and go prayer. That's why we need this passion. And the Lord will do it for us as we go for this retreat in Jesus' name. The purpose of the retreat, lastly, is to relieve our time of feasting of the war on the word of God. To release that time. To appreciate that time, like I say, a concentrated time. You know, we go there from sat from Friday in the evenings towards the night, we'll be hearing the word of God. And then we come again early in the morning on Sunday on um, Saturday morning. We come from Saturday morning till Saturday night, just hearing the word of God. There'll be Bible study, there'll be time my father and the Lord, Bible teaching, there'll be time for faith clinic, there'll be time for revival session, there'll be time for you know for for, for evangelism messages, all this time, Bible study time. And all this time, in fact, we'll just be hearing the word of God and be praying. I pray, you know, you will release that time. You will appreciate that time. Because that time, you may never get it again. I say that time, you may never get it again. Because you cannot get such a time in a church. This church, we come here now three hours, we are all gone. Is that not so? But at the retreat, we'll be there. Twelve hours, we'll still be there. Ten, you know, uh, um, ten hours, we'll still be there. We'll be there, we'll be eating together, we'll be sleeping together, we'll be sleeping in our various rooms, and we come together, faith clinic, and miracle, the Lord will do great things for us, in Jesus' name. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. But then we need to prepare. This leads us to point two, preparation for God's best. God has promised us his best at this retreat. We all know that every major worldwide project, every rewarding and profitable program required adequate planning and preparation to ensure a maximum benefit. Is that not so? Is that not so? So of you that came from Africa before you came to the UK, did to make preparation? I remember one of us, you know, when we went to pick at the airport, I mean, uh, at the, when she landed into Abadi, and, you know, the low, we saw the kind of preparation she has made already to get to the UK. You know, the same thing, right? you know, if we must have a maximum benefit from any program, there is need for adequate preparation. Remember that saying, he who fails to what? To plan is what? Is plan. Say it now. Ah, you are talking as if this is new. This, this I'm saying are new things. He who fails to plan, plans to fail. That's right. So that we will not plan to fail at this refit because God has promised us his best. I say God has promised us his best. I say God has promised us his best. Pastor, where do you see that? Where do you know that God has promised us his best? Let me just show you one. Let me show you one. Exodus chapter 36. At this retreat, God has promised us his best. Tell your neighbor, God has promised us his best. He look at it. Exodus chapter 36, 34, 34 verse 26. And I will make thee... And the places round about my eat a blessing. God has promised us that from 26 to 28, He is going to make Westwood Hotel an eel of blessing. An eel of blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in His season. His shower will come down. Because there shall be what? Because there shall be what? Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. That's why 
adequate preparation is necessary. Sincere heart and life preparation always precede supernatural breakthroughs and unforgettable encounter with God. A heart that is sincere and a life that is prepared will always encounter God. That's why you need to come with a sincere heart. You need to come like Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 7. I mean chapter, uh, chapter 7, he told the children of Israel, look at it, look at what he told them, that they need to prepare themselves. First Samuel chapter 7. The same thing the Lord is telling us today, we need to prepare ourselves. First Samuel <coughs> chapter 7, chapter 7, I will read from verse 3. And Samuel spake all the... And spake unto all the whole house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with your heart, and put away the strange gods, and ask from among you, and prepare your heart unto the Lord. Prepare. Do you see it in your Bible? Prepare your heart. Brethren, we still have today. We still have this. In fact, for us in Abadim. In the, our own retreat, we even start from next Sunday. Uh, but maybe our brother didn't announce that. Our retreat will start from next Sunday. We are starting with the retreat. In fact, we are having prayer and fasting next week Sunday. Don't miss church because of fasting. Tell your neighbor, look at your neighbor and say, I will not miss church because of fasting. <laughs> and those of people, they cannot, they cannot do without their breakfast. But we are telling you, this Sunday, let's go. Because we want to prepare ourselves. We want to call upon God. We want to seek the face of God. We want to start the retreat, you know, with a heart of seeking the Lord, of preparing our heart, and also of setting goals. And the Lord will do this for us in Jesus' name. Amen. The level of our readiness to receive from God is determined by our relationship and our preparation to receive from him. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's why we need to prepare brethren. That's why we need to make ourselves available. That's not the time. You know, in Abadin, they always tell you, ah, if you are working during the holiday time, that 26 is double pay. And because of double pay, people will run away from the things of God. 25th, Christmas Day, they will work. 26th, they will work. 27th, they will work. What shall you profit a man? You gain all the old money and you lose your soul. You lose your soul. Have you thought about that? Life is not all about money. Do you know that? Life, what matters in life is your relationship with the Almighty. There are many people that have no money. But when they died, I know of one, a billionaire, when he died, they did not even bury him with a coffin. He had all the billions. Start. Outside. Foreign currency. Foreign account. He had all the billions. But when he died, he was not even buried with, not even a, not even a plywood coffin. What will you profit? You have all the money. You make all the money. And there is no relationship with God. That's why we are telling you, we need to prepare, brethren. We need to come. And this preparation we are talking should cover every area of our life. The spiritual life, the physical life, the material life, the financial life, and the mental state. It should cover. What are the things we do in our preparation? What are the things we need to do? Number one, set goals. It's not there in the slide. Set goals. Write it down. Set goals for your life. As you go for this retreat, maybe you are here, you have been rising and falling. You know, you are safe today, tomorrow you go to the valley. You are on the mountain today, tomorrow again you go into sin. You know, today you say, oh God, I am for Jesus. Jesus alone, tomorrow you are singing, I am for Satan, Satan take me. What is that kind of life? Why don't you make it a goal and say, God, at this retreat, I'm making up my mind that I, will, I want the victorious Christian life. Set that goal. 
you are saved, you are not yet sanctified, set the goal and say, go at this retreat like you sanctify our pastor and some of our brethren too during the retreat. Oh God, sanctify me. And set it a goal. Set it a goal. Set a goal. Don't just go to the retreat without goals in your life. What are the things you want to achieve? Number two, sanctify yourself. Set apart yourself. Like I told us during the question and answer time. Set apart yourself. Make up your mind 26 to 27 uh, to 28. Any shift that comes is cancelled. That's part of sanctifying yourself. Do you know that? Do you know that? It's part of it. You say, ah, for me, <laughs> any lectures, in fact, and, you know, our universities, they don't fix lecture. Do you know that? They don't fix, there's no lecture in 26. No university in Abadin has a lecture on the 26. If, I, if I'm wrong, raise up your hand. <laughs> I know because the universities they are closed down from the 20th at uh, uh, the 20th they are closed down to January. Is that not the truth? That is, so what's your stress again? The set yourself, set, sank, prepare yourself. See, for me, 26 to 28, I must be in Glasgow, and you will be there in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, support the program with prayer and finance. Support it. Let's pray together. You know, like we say this Sunday now, coming Sunday, we are going to have prayer and fasting. Let's come together and pray and wait upon God. Support it. You know, thank God some of us are giving towards the retreat. You know, we are giving our money. Even some of us students, we are giving. I'm so encouraged when I saw students also giving towards the retreat. I said, ah, it is not those who are working that we give. Even me too. I'm not working, but I will give. You know, you are supporting that little thing you have. We are not saying that we are not, it's for the members of the church now, not visitors. Do you understand? Members of the church, you are that little one, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, you are given to support the program. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Seek, number four, to get the best from God. Seek to get the best from God. And then when you go for the retreat, serve with the commitment. And dedication. Some of us will call us, you say, oh, you'll be an usher. Some of us will tell us, you help us with the youth. Some of us will tell us, you help us with the children. Serve with commitment and dedication. And then, number six, secure all necessary permission. For those of us who are working, you might even want to take uh, 29 as a day off. Like for me now, I've secured necessary all my permission already. 29, I won't go to office. 30, I won't go to office. 31, I won't go to the office. 4, I won't go to the office. I'm telling you my secret now. Eh? 4, I won't go to the office. 2, I won't go to the office. I said, Master, you don't work it. I'm not, because I will be in Abadi. Because I'm here with you. And the Lord will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. And then spread abroad the news of the program. Tell, about, tell others about it. Tell your neighbors. Tell your friends, invite them. And as they come, the Lord will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Point three, before we pray, profit of the retreat. As you go for this retreat, what are the things we'll receive? I've told us already in, in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26, the Lord has promised us there shall be showers of blessing. There shall be what? Showers of blessing. What are the profits? If you write that word profit, just write it vertically. What are the things we receive at this retreat? Number one, P in that profit will get peace of God with full salvation. With full salvation. Maybe you are here, there is condemnation in your heart, there is the load of sin in you. As you go to this retreat, that peace that brings assurance, that peace that brings comfort, that peace like a cold water, you know, that peace that comes with full salvation, the Lord will give to you at this retreat in Jesus' name. The arrow in that prophet, there will be righteousness within and without. Righteousness within, righteousness without. The Lord will give us that righteousness in Jesus' name. 
the hole in that prophet, there will be the overflowing power of the Holy Ghost baptism. Overflowing power. At this point, there will be the you go, you get the power of the Holy Ghost. Maybe you are here, you are saved, you are sanctified, and you have been praying. Oh God, I need the power. Oh God, I need the anointing. Oh God, I need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. At this retreat, as you go to seek the Lord, the Lord Himself is going to fill us with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. The earth in that prophet, there will be fruitfulness in body and in spirit. In your body, you will be fruitful. Your brain will be fruitful. Our student, you will be fruitful. I say you will be fruitful. The Lord will crown you with success in Jesus' name. At this retreat, the idea, there will be inseparable fellowship. Fellowship in, in the love of God. Inseparable fellowship in the love of God. The Lord will give us that fellowship. Nothing will take us away. At this retreat, we'll be grounded in the love of God. At this retreat, as we go, we will renew our commitment and we'll become stronger in the Lord in Jesus' name. In that prophet, the tea, there will be testimonies of spectacular miracles. Testimonies of spectacular miracles. The Lord will give it to us at this retreat in Jesus' name. And then there will be the supply of all needs. All our needs, the Lord will supply. As we go for this retreat, what are the things we are looking for? Are you looking for a wife? The Lord will give you a wife. Are you looking for a husband? The Lord will give you a husband. I didn't hear your amen. I didn't hear your amen. The Lord will give it to you in Jesus' name. I know of many people, it was at a retreat like this, they got their wife. It was in a conference like this, they got their husband. As you two go, you know, like our Father and the Lord have told us, you don't just go and say, you are praying for the will of God, and the eyes are closed and everything, you are just walking blindly, closed. No! Open your eyes, God will give you your perfect wife. God will give you your perfect husband. And the Lord will do this for us in Jesus' name! As we end up this morning, preparation for God's best. Seven things I want to leave with us. Number one, let there be personal preparation. Prepare yourself personally. Make up your mind that you must be at that retreat. That you will go for this retreat. Make up your mind that you will be there and you will be there. Number two, let there be persuasive publicity. Let's begin to tell our friends. We have the ambition now. We've given us three free. You know, some of you can even go back to the usher and say, oh, usher, can you give me those three ambies? Don't you know who am I? Don't you know that I'm a very popular person on the campus? Don't you know I'm a very popular? And, you know, you are part of that and you want to publicize it. Like that woman, that, that Samaritan woman, we are told, that woman went to the city and told the people, come see a man that told me everything whatsoever I have done. Is this not the Messiah? You too, you want to be persuasive. You are inviting your friend. You are saying, oh, my friend, you must go. You know, you've not been to... You can even tell them, you can even teach them a little and say, you, have you been to Glasgow before? Have you been to Glasgow before? By the way, I'm giving you an offer. Let me take you to Glasgow, free of charge. I will pay your accommodation. <laughs> you, are, you are telling them, because you are the one thing. Tell yourself, I'm the one thing. <laughs> I look at yourself and I say, tell yourself, I'm the one paying. Hey, hey, tell them, tell them. I say, I will pay your, I will pay your accommodation. I will even pay for your transportation because the church will sponsor, we will sponsor them there. We will pay for their transportation. We will pay for their accommodation. You will tell them that I will even pay for your breakfast and dinner. Don't just tell them I will pay for your feeding. You don't say feeding. In this country, you don't say feeding. What do you say? I will pay for your breakfast and what? Breakfast and what? And somebody said, Pastor, there is lunch. Now listen, there is lunch. Don't worry, there will be lunch. There will be lunch. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. And then number three, let there be purposeful participation. Purpose, go with the purpose. Go with all these things we've said before. And then number four, let there be prevailing prayers. In fact, what we've done in our church now, we've given days to people to pray for this retreat. And we started since um, Wednesday. Am I right? Uh, about Friday. I think we, we started since Thursday. People have been praying every day. Prayer and fasting. And I'm giving the invitation to you now. If you know you want to join too, and say, Pastor, why is it that I don't know about it? Come and meet me. I will apologize to you. And so, my brother, 
I'm sorry. Oh, my sister, I'm sorry. Okay, give me. Which day do you want to pray now? And we are praying till the day of the retreat. Prayer and fasting. We are praying from that day till 26 of the... Prayer and fasting. You are going to give us a day that you will pray and you will fast. Prevailing prayer. And then number five, there will be privilege partnership. Privilege partnership. What do we mean by that? You know, at this retreat, you know, we are going to put some of us, you know, who are students, you know, that even though you are married, even though, uh, you know, you are engaged, we are going to say, okay, my sister, can you stay with this sister? My brother, can you stay with this brother? You know, it's a partnership we are trying to bond between ourselves. I remember the last time, you know, there was one brother that said, ah, hey, pastor, you know, me and that brother, we, the, the chemistry was just there, we were, we late where, you know, those days when we go for conference, we don't go with our families, we go with other brethren, we share together in the night, we, when our others are sleeping, we are meditating, we are sharing the word of God, we are also sharing our experiences, our life experiences, our spiritual experiences, and we are also praying together. Those are what we call privileged partnership. And then number seven, the, number six, there will be practical preaching. You hear the word of God and you want to do the word of God immediately. When you hear the word of God of restitution and you know there is a brother there or there is a sister there you've offended, you want to quickly go and say, my brother, my sister, have just had the word of God at this retreat. Please forgive me. You will not delay it and say, oh, okay, I will do it when I get to Abadi. No, you do it immediately. Pastor, go with me. Practical preaching. There will be all tackle given. And say, those who are not yet born again, give your life to Jesus. And you know you've not given your life to Jesus, you surrender. There will be those who say, oh, oh, they have not been sanctified. They will say, those who are not yet sanctified, raise up your hand. Let's pray for you. And you raise up your hand. You are not ashamed. And you will get that experience in Jesus' name. Practical preaching. And lastly, there is plenty promise. There is plenty promise. And Jesus is telling us today, 26 to 28, come ye yourself, come apart. You know, if we don't come apart, brethren, it will be difficult to stay together. That's why we need to come apart. You know, and we travel together, 26 to 28, in Glasgow, at this retreat, and as we all come, and we begin to prepare ourselves, and we begin to tell our friends, and we begin to tell our neighbors, the Lord is going to bless everyone in Jesus' name. Past preparation to receive God's best at this retreat. God has promised us his best. I say God has promised us his best. You want to make up your mind? Prepare yourself. Prepare to see the Lord thy God, O Israel. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. We want to commit ourselves to the hands of the Lord this morning. That the Lord himself will prepare us. At this retreat, we will receive the best from God. At this retreat, we will receive the best from God. Let's pray that the Lord himself will prepare us in the purpose of the retreat. We come to the retreat so that we can reaffirm the truth of the word of God we have always learned and believed. We come to revisit our old consecration. We come to renew our commitment to make heaven and influence others positively for Christ. We come to reach forth for the torch of Jesus for healing at the retreat. We come to refresh all our past heart. We come to rekindle the fire of God once again and to release our time of feasting on the word of God. That's why we must prepare to receive the best from God at this retreat. Prepare yourself, my brother. Prepare yourself, my sister. Set goals. Set goals. Set yourself apart to be at the retreat. Support the retreat with prayer and finance. Seek to get the best from God at this retreat. Serve with a commitment and dedication. Secure all necessary permission. And spread abroad the news of this retreat. We've seen the prophets. When we come together, there is peace with God. There is righteousness within and without. There is the overflowing power of the Holy Ghost baptism. There is fruitfulness in body and in spirit. There will be an inseparable fellowship in the love of God. Testimony of spectacular miracles. Supply of all needs at this future. Let's talk to the Lord. That the Lord himself will help us. As we gather together at the retreat, 
As we come together at this retreat, the Lord Himself will bless us mightily. Tell yourself, you are going to invite others. You are coming with your friends. You are going to publicize it. You are going to pray about it. <laughs> Give us your own day where you want to join us in the prayer and fasting. We have the prayer point we are praying upon. Next, next Sunday, we are coming for a prayer and fasting day for this retreat as a church. Make up your mind, you will participate in all this program to prepare ourselves for the best, to receive the best from God at this program. Talk to the Lord, and the Lord will do it for you, my sister. And the Lord will do it for you, my brother. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare your heart to receive the best from God at this program. Almighty God in heaven, we want to thank you for the privilege of your word again. Thank you for your instructions unto us on the need to get prepared for this great event. Because you, the Almighty God, are prepared already to bless us. I want to pray for every hearer that have had this word this very morning. That you give us that mindset to start getting ourselves ready, prepared, Lord, physically and spiritually for this great event so that we can receive the best from you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, as we prepare, I pray your spirit to guide us. Your spirit will lead us. Specific areas want us to prepare on O God and help us with obedience, listening to your spirit as a spirit guides to do, put those preparations in place, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, for many, Lord, to be very much that in between decisions. Lord, or whether or not to go for this retreat, confirm them beyond any reasonable doubt on the need to participate in this retreat, Lord, in Jesus' name. And as we all gather together according to your instructions, say, gather unto me, my people, that make covenant with me. As we gather together, Lord, we want to pray. Your blessing will be abundant upon every life in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, because of the answers in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.